In this lesson, we'll learn how to represent data using a box plot, also known as a box and whisker plot. Now, as you'll soon see, box plots allow us to create a visual summary of key information, such as range, median, and dispersion. Here's a brief preview. If we wanted to represent the following set of numbers in the form of a box plot, it would look something like this. Now, these box plots are based on the concept of medians, which we already know about, as well as the concept of quartiles. There are three quartiles altogether, and they divide the data into four groups that have approximately the same number of values in them. Okay, so now that we have a rough idea of where we're going, let's see how we can take these numbers and represent them in the form of a box plot. The first step is to rearrange the values in ascending order. The next step is to find the median. So to do this, we'll need to find the middle term. Now there are 16 numbers in this list, so where is the middle term? Well, we can find the middle number using this formula. So the middle term of 16 values is equal to 16 plus 1 divided by 2, which equals 8.5. This means that the median lies between the 8th and 9th terms. When this occurs, the median will equal the average of the two terms on either side. The average of 4 and 4 is 4, so the median of set A is 4. Now the median and the second quartile are always the same. So we can see that the second quartile, denoted as Q2, is equal to 4 as well. At this point, we can see that the median divides our list into two groups. On the left-hand side, we have the lesser numbers, and on the right-hand side, we have the greater numbers. To find the other two quartiles for our box plot, we must find the median of the lesser numbers and the median of the greater numbers. Let's begin with the lesser numbers. There are eight numbers altogether, so the median is right here, which means the median will equal the average of these two numbers. The average of three and three is three, so the median of the lesser numbers is three. So we say that three is the first quartile, which we can now add to our list. Next, when we find the median of the greater numbers, we see that it's right here which means the median will equal the average of 7 and 9, which is 8. So 8 is the third quartile, which we can now add to our list. At this point, we've identified the three quartiles on which we'll base our box plot. To begin, the smallest number in the set is 2. So the whisker part of our box plot will begin right here at 2. Next, the first quartile is 3, so our box will begin right here at 3. The third quartile is 8, so our box will extend all the way here to 8. Next, the second quartile is 4, so we can draw a line inside the box at 4 to show where the median is. Finally, the biggest number in the set is 11, so the whisker part of our box plot extends all the way to 11 here. Okay, so now that we've represented set A with a box plot, we can ignore the set and get some key information from this graphic we can see that the numbers range from 2 to 11. The median is 4, and we can see that about half of the numbers lie inside the box. In other words, about half of the numbers are between 3 and 8. So as you can see, box plots are a convenient way to visually represent a set of numbers. Now you may have noticed that set A contains 16 values, and 16 is a multiple of 4, which allowed us to divide the set into 4 equal groups. You may be wondering what we need to do if the number of values is not a multiple of 4. Well, we'll examine this in a few seconds. But first, I'd like to discuss briefly some terms and notation related to box plots. To begin, this end tip here represents the smallest value in the set, and this tip represents the biggest value. Now, the beginning of the box represents the first quartile, which is the median of the lesser values, and the end of the box represents the third quartile, which is the median of the greater values. Finally, this line inside the box represents the second quartile, which is the median of all of the numbers in the set. Okay, now that we've covered the notation, let's see how we handle an odd number of values. Now before we continue, I should point out that not everyone agrees on one way to handle sets with an odd number of values. The method that I'll describe here is based on the method that the test makers prefer. 
Okay, let's draw a box plot that represents this set. Since the numbers are already arranged in ascending order, we'll first find the median. There are 11 numbers altogether, so when we use our formula, we see that the middle value will be the sixth term, which is right here. So the median, also known as the second quartile, is right here. At this point, we must divide our set into lesser and greater numbers. The question now is, what do we do with the median? Do we include it in one of the two groups or not? Well, for the purposes of this test, the rule is that we do not include the median in either of these groups. So here are the lesser numbers, and here are the greater numbers. At this point, we must find the median of the lesser numbers and the median of the greater numbers. Here's the median of the lesser numbers, so 2 is the first quartile, and here's the median of the greater numbers, so 6 is the third quartile. From here, we can construct our box plot as follows. Here's the smallest value in the set, here's the first quartile, here's the second quartile, also known as the median, here's the third quartile, and here's the biggest number in our set. Okay, now that we have created two box plots, let's review the steps involved. First, rearrange the values in ascending order. Next, find the median of all values, and this will be the second quartile. Then find the median of the lesser numbers, this will be the first quartile, and then find the median of the greater numbers, which will be the third quartile. Now don't forget that in the process of finding the first and third quartiles, we must exclude the second quartile from the lesser and greater numbers. Finally, once you've found all three quartiles, draw your box plot in this format. Okay, and that concludes this lesson. Please pause this video and answer the question before continuing. Alright, let's examine each statement beginning with A. Is the median of set A greater than the median of set B? Well, from the box plots, we can see that the median of set A is 6, and the median of set B is 5. So statement A is indeed true. On to statement B. Must it be true that exactly 200 values in set B are greater than 5? To find out, let's remove the set A box plot for a second. So we know that set B consists of 400 integers, so let's say the set looks something like this. Since the median of set B is 5, we know that the median divides the 400 integers into 200 lesser numbers and 200 greater numbers. Now here comes an important part. Since set B has an even number of integers, the median of 5 is calculated by finding the average of these two values. So, for example, it's possible that these two values are 4 and 6, which would indeed give us a median of 5. In this scenario, we can clearly see that there are exactly 200 integers greater than 5. So, statement B is possible. However, it's not necessarily true. Consider this possible scenario. We know that these two numbers must have an average of 5. So, while those two numbers could be 4 and 6, they could also be 5 and 5, in which case we have a different outcome. In this scenario, we have at most 199 integers that are greater than 5. So as you can see, statement B need not be true, which means we can eliminate it. Now on to statement C. Must it be true that at least 100 values in set A are greater than or equal to 8? To find out, we'll remove the set B box plot for a second. Now first recognize that the three quartiles here divide the 400 integers into four groups of 100 integers. Since the third quartile is 8, we can conclude that the 100 numbers lying to the right of 8 must be greater than or equal to 8. This means that statement C must be true. Finally we have statement D. Is the range of set A greater than the range of set B? Well, set A ranges from 3 to 12 so its range is 9. Set B ranges from 1 to 10, so its range is also 9. So we cannot say that statement D is true. This means the correct answers here are A and C.